New York City. We're going to be in New York for Thanksgiving. So. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, nice. We're going to see the parade. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll, be ba- I'll be back home in Dallas with my little three-year-old. Oh, is that Aww. right? Oh, you live in Dallas. Well, are you, oh, you're in New York <laughs> yeah, as a visitor. Yes, I'm in New York as a visitor. I live in Dallas. Uh, we moved to Dallas because I, I travel actually so much. I'm, uh, I do about 100 trips a year so uh, for work. So oh, I wanted goodness. with a three-year-old to be someplace that was central and um it's great. I love it there. So I, I, I suppose it's a little bit risky to do this, but the events that happened the other day, I'm sure if... Were you in the city when that guy ran those tr- that truck into those poor people? Yes, I was there in the city and actually uh, a few hours later gave a talk on... Uh, on happiness uh, <laughs> uh, to uh, a whole uh, group of 300 people. So really? it was an interesting moment. So, um, and I, but I think that in times like this, it, it's one of those times in which we need, we need happiness more than ever. Because I think that there's always negative, stressful things that are going on within our lives and within this world, and we can easily find them. We can focus our brains on them, and we also need people to remind us of those joyful moments, like you were talking about the, you know, the joyful times we have at Thanksgiving or those times with our families. So yeah. how in the midst of all the, all the stress we might be feeling in the midst of the holidays with work and travel and, yeah. and yeah. crowds, how do we actually get back to those meaningful moments that we loved as a kid where those holidays were a sense of joy like you were describing? I know, I know. I, I remember when September 11th, 2001 happened, the television stations all became news stations. And it, it not that a TV is my only way to escape reality, but it kind of was, and and, and I couldn't because because at that at that day that two two or three days, even MTV, which was uh, I used to go there just for the mindless fun it was, but it, but even they were carrying coverage coverage of that event, and not, not that they shouldn't have. I'm I'm saying, it, I think I was searching for something to distract me from this other news that was happening up in New York. Yeah, we have limited amount of resources for our brain, and what we find is we keep like almost like taking a poison pill every day, looking yeah. for like what's the negative thing that's happening. You know, I, I I had my phone set so I could get news alerts, and I would be giving a talk on happiness research and getting a news alert about something bad that was happening on the other side of the world. And I think our brains, because they're limited, need to actually intentionally focus on the things that we're grateful for, which is like when we're having a, you know, with all the stresses that we experienced with travel, trying to find a way to get our brains back to not focusing upon my plane is 30 minutes delayed right now, but focused upon, I'm going to see my family. These are the people I care about. I want to remember these great memories, right? So it's about refocusing those, those finite and and precious brain resources. And is is stress sometimes self-imposed because with you know, with the cell phones out there, it's so mobile. We work in a mall, and every time people come out of the mall, they're always on their phone. They always get in the car. They're on the phone. They're never just enjoying the moment. I th- well, I think that's so true. We've seen it. So, and it's not only what they're doing on the phone, because they're oftentimes looking at the negative or hyper-comparing on social media, but also because they're not present in the moment, we're actually overloading our brain. Our brain actually can't deal with all the noise that's coming in. And whenever it has a lot of noise coming in, it feels like it's under threat. So it actually stops looking for the positive within our world. It's just seeing the world as a threat. And it shuts off the part of the brain that's looking for the things you're grateful for, which is, you know, if, if you think about it, when, when we're in the midst of travel, there's so much that's going on. We might need to take time away just to have those quiet moments. Or, or vacation itself could be those moments where we could actually quiet some of that noise, but I see people on their phones on vacation on the beach, <laughs> you know, like we need that moment to take our brains away from the noise to actually focus on that rejuvenation period so we can go back to, to that performance wow. zone that we want to be in. That's really good advice. I hope people are hearing what you're saying. Uh, it sounds like they want to. That's, that's what I think. I think people want to hear what you're saying and they want to do these things. Um, what, what, what are the other things? I mean, we talked about the horrible things in the news. What about in our own lives? If we are distracted by the bills, for example, you know, you have, as this happens to everybody, you, you go home, you're, you're kind of in a good mood, you go through the mail. Oh, my gosh, look at this. I forgot to pay the electric bill or, or some, <laughs> something like that. I don't mean to chuckle at that. But though, our, I think our everyday, our everyday news in our own lives sometimes brings us down, too. 
Yeah, that's why I'm really enjoying this partnership with Bank of America because we've been actually researching stress itself. And what we've been finding is if I, if I tell you somebody's failing English, you don't, really, you don't really feel any stress. But if I tell you your kid is failing English, you feel stress because there's meaning involved with that relationship, right? So the fact that you feel stressed as you read through the news or as you look through your mail or as you feel stressed when you're traveling – There's meaning involved with that. We just kind of forget about it. And what we found in our research is if you feel the effect of stress, but you don't reconnect to the meaning behind why you even care in the first place, it turns out you have a... It, when we uh, when we do that, we actually have 23% higher levels of backaches, headaches, fatigue, um, burnout. All those negative things about, about stress happen when we lose the meaning involved with why we're doing things. So what I would love for people to do in the midst of a busy travel, travel season is in the midst of their daily life, is to reconnect to why things actually matter in the first place. Mm. If I have an overflowing inbox, uh, I feel stressed about not because my inbox is full, it's because those are family members I want to get back to, or leads I'm excited about that might lead to more more, uh, vacations for my family. And uh, you had said you're traveling with your three-year-old, so that in itself has to be stressful, not because you're not prepared, (laughs) but because you're always constantly looking around. you got to keep your three-year-old safe at all times. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're carrying a stroller and a car seat. Yeah, traveling with a kid has been right. so different than all the business travel I've done. So, <laughs> you know, I've done several things to t- try to change that. You know, like that I, I like intentionally, for example, one of the things that I do to make travel better is I intentionally uh, save things that I, like uh, television shows that I've been really wanting to watch. I could binge watch it at home, but like I'm saving the finale of Westworld. I'm saving that for the next time my pl- my plane is delayed. So I actually have it on my computer and I won't nice. let myself watch it. That's a I don't good want, idea. I don't want to be delayed, right? But like it actually makes me kind of look forward to them. I'd be like, yes, it actually happened. I get to watch the finale. <laughs> That's a good idea. So, by the way, by the, by the way, um, the trip that Robin and I are taking. Just so you know, we're 62, 63 years old. And uh, in my younger days, I would always get, um, what do you call, traveler's checks. And now, of course, everything's on the phone. And Robin and I just entered the 21st century. We got, yes. we got phones that can actually do those things. It's only like and three so weeks old. And so I went to the <laughs> Bank of America, and I asked them, what do I need to know? And I didn't know there were new rules. Like, you have to tell them you're going away. Uh-huh. So uh, that was interesting to me. I'm glad we, I brought it up because, I see, the thing is, I don't know how to do Uber. And yeah, I'm, and me I'm neither. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm thinking I might need to know that well, information. Know yeah, well, I I think all those things make travel easier. You're right. Like doing, you know, ride sharing helps sometimes. Like I, I I because I travel so much. Like I actually spend a lot of time looking through all these different you know, like credit cards, for example, that could give you rewards that that come back so that you could actually, uh, like, I spend all this money while I'm traveling, you know, when I go to a coffee shop or when I go eat and like all these things that accumulate while I'm traveling that because I give a hundred talks a year, like I'm trying to, I'm away from my son for a lot of those, but because I use the travel rewards card from Bank of America, I actually earn, you know, like a point and a half for every dollar I spend. So what that means is while I'm traveling, I'm actually earning money to take my three-year-old on a vacation. So suddenly right. this trip that I'm like, why am I away from my son is leading directly to getting to spend these meaningful moments with my son. And, and I look forward to that moment. So I think there's anticipatory joy that we can have as we look forward. Good information. Very many, a lot of messages in a short period of time. Sean, thank you for being on the air with us. The book is The Happiness Advantage. Um, how do we get the book? And do you have any websites you can tell us about? Um, uh, the book is just on Amazon, uh, uh, happinessadvantage.com. Um, but if anyone wants to see my research, I have a TED Talk, TED.com. If you just search Google, uh, if you Google Sean and happiness, it'll pop right up. Okay, very good. Uh, Sean, thank you for being on the show with us today. Good stuff. And have a great Thanksgiving, by the way. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. All right, we are up against that break. Let's take that break, and we'll be right back.
If you find an animal or a bird that needs help, call Animus Foundation at 352-843-6379. They will come and get the animal if you can't take it to them. High school students and those with court-ordered community service can earn required hours in this rewarding environment. And veterans who share a bond with animals and parrots who have been through mental or physical trauma are especially welcomed. Families, clubs, and tourists can arrange for tours of Animus without driving for hours or miles. Consider volunteering. Animus needs you. Here are today's headlines from the source, WOCA medical marijuana advocates frustrated with the delays in getting state-issued identification cards out to patients are demanding solutions from state lawmakers. The Florida Medical Marijuana Business Association says some lawmakers are working on bills to address the issue, including one that would let patients who haven't gotten their cards yet get prescriptions filled without them, at least temporarily. But the state legislature doesn't meet until January. Thousands of medical marijuana patients are still waiting for the state-issued ID required to get the drug from dispensaries. Some lawmakers are furious about the way Christian backs Governor Rick Scott's medical marijuana czar has been handling the rollout. They're skeptical of his claims that lawsuits are holding up the process, including a new lawsuit challenging a deal to have a private printer take over the ID cards. As cold weather returns to Florida, manatees are on the move. Officials at the Florida Wildlife Conservation Commission are warning boaters to keep an eye out for manatees. Ron Messick at the FWC says November is when the gentle giants start looking for warmer water. Florida's at the northern edge of their winter range, and as waters cool off and temperatures get below 68 degrees for a water temperature, uh, manatees start to uh, feel a little cold, and they start looking for warmer waters. Most of the migrating manatees are headed for freshwater springs, where the water temperature is constant year-round. They're also fond of the warm water discharged by power plants. Rick Flagg, Tallahassee. Marion County residents will get the chance to look at possible textbooks for next school year at an event next week. The school district will adopt its own textbooks for the first time instead of using a state-approved list. On Wednesday, November 8th, the public will get to physically review textbooks for 17 categories at every grade level. Parents, teachers, and community members have already been reviewing the planned books. A panel of 16 were involved in the process. The open review event will take place from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m at Building 2 of the Robert Mack Dunwoody Educational Complex on Fort King Street in Ocala. After the event next Wednesday, a final vote on the books will take place November 27th at Westport High School. The mayor of Miami Beach, Philip Levine, made a big announcement yesterday. Today, before friends and family, and inspired by the heroism of those who, who dreamed big and achieved big, I am announcing my candidacy for governor of the state of Florida. Levine, who is running as a Democrat, made his announcement in a building he owns in Miami's Wynwood Arts District. He stood in a large hall surrounded by murals of iconic historical figures painted on the walls for the occasion. President John F. Kennedy, abolitionist Harriet Tubman, migrant labor leader Cesar Chavez, and civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. There are a number of viable candidates for the job as the next football coach for the Florida Gators, but one candidate is rising above the others in terms of betting odds. Central Florida coach Scott Frost is now the betting favorite to replace Jim McElwain, who parted ways with the University of Florida this past Sunday. Frost has the Knights unbeaten and ranked number 18 in the initial college football playoff rankings. Dan Mullen of Mississippi State and Willie Taggart of Oregon have also been mentioned as possible candidates for the job. In August, Disney's Animal Kingdom celebrated the birth of two tiger cubs, a male and a female. Well, now the cubs have names. Jida, the male club, and Anala, the female cub, are now two months old. Their names, respectively, mean paws in Malay and fiery in Hindi. According to Disney, the cubs continue to bond with their mother, Sony, and show their own personalities. Jida and Anala will soon be featured on the Maharaja Jungle Trek. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The City of Ocala Department of Recreation and Parks are proud to present the 34th annual Light Up Ocala on November 18th. 
The fun starts on the square in downtown Ocala from 4 to 9 p.m. There'll be food vendors, four stages of entertainment, Whoville, Theme Kids Zone, the downtown holiday skating rink, crafts, the Junior Sunshine Christmas Parade around the square, and at about 7.30 p.m., the official downtown lighting ceremony. See you at Light Up Ocala. If you find an animal or a bird that needs help, call Animus Foundation at 352-843-6379. They will come and get the animal if you can't take it to them. High school students and those with court-ordered community service can earn required hours in this rewarding environment. And veterans who share a bond with animals and parrots who have been through mental or physical trauma are especially welcomed. Families, clubs, and tourists can arrange for tours of Animus without driving for hours or miles. Consider volunteering. Animus needs you.